And now for the Monerotopia Prize Report segment. Hey, hey guys. Hey. Good morning. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Huge okay. thank you to uh, Untraceable, by the way. Donated another Monero to the Copa Monero Q. Super cool, man. Super thank awesome. Thank you, Untraceable. Thank you, man. Not to uh, dampen the vibe, but I do have to say that Body's comments do echo my own uh, my own feelings about the current Malay situation. Unfortunately, give him yeah. a chance, but he's done too much status BS to have any anarchy. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, yeah, you think it? Uh, the jury's yeah. in on that. The most recent, the most recent thing he did was trying to to join NATO. <laughs> anarchists don't try to join nato like that's that's a pretty good rule of thumb I, i'd say that's a good heuristic to go by um, but there's been a whole bunch of other stuff like his his unwavering support for israel it's like yeah i'm not saying that that israel hasn't had some of their own problems and people doing wrong stuff to them uh, obviously flying over the wall and, and bombing a bunch of civilians mm -hmm. is horrible um nevertheless they're not <laughs> they, they, they are not innocent here so without getting too political about it there's just one thing after another, the guy just continues to do more status stuff. Let's see. Uh, it may or may not have been his fault, but they, they, they're releasing a bunch of crypto regulation or they released a bunch of crypto regulation. Did they? Argentina. I know. Yeah. What, what is the regulation? I know there was talk. I know at one point they were talking of like basically trying to get, get people to, uh, uh, you know, show the amount of crypto they own. Like right? report is their crypto report, yeah, thing. report, yeah, report their crypto holdings. I know that that was spoken about at one point. I was like, what? Like that would be, yeah. That was some kind of amnesty be... program for people a lot, that, like so that people could bring money back into the banking system without paying taxes on it. Right. Um, that just sounds like overall a horrible idea. These are, you know, Malay. Okay, maybe let's just say Malay is cool for the sake of argument. Let's say he's fine. He's cool. What happens when the next guy gets in there? You put all your money back into the bank. And, mm -hmm. uh, okay, you, you got it in there, but then they started inflating the money again. Uh, you know, like, this just didn't seem like a good idea. They, as far as the crypto thing, so Argentina was on the gray list for, uh, what's the, FinCEN? I think it was the FinCEN gray list. It's probably not FinCEN. Anyways, they were on some, like, big international gray list. And in order to get off of the gray list um, and sort of come back into the good graces of of really, like, the Western financial powers... They had to release crypto regulation. So you have right. to, if you're an exchange, you have to get registered and do some other stuff. Um, yeah, was it? Yeah, wasn't, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't FinCEN. What was it? It was. Uh, yeah, whatever. But I, I know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So I mean, I can understand why they would do it. Malay's like main campaign promise was to dollarize Argentina, and mm -hmm. so if he wants to dollarize Argentina, probably it would help <laughs> to have the the help of the United States. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he's got to play ball in a lot of ways, even if hypothetically he's he's a libertarian. And I tend to think that he is. But, man, the NATO thing really, really bugs me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was following him very closely in the beginning. Uh, so I, I've kept my eye off it. I didn't know things got that bad. <laughs> I know you two were kind of trying to give him a chance in the beginning, right? You you were hoping for the best. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's an yeah. It was the financial financial action task force. I think that had them on their 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 gray uh, okay. list or whatever. And yeah, so I guess they were trying to bend the knee and and get off the list. God damn it, man. Yeah, I mean that that like like that's literally that's what that's we that's what we need the exact opposite of, right? Like we need somebody in that moment to not bend the knee. That's so the the one guy who was claiming to be that guy, an anarcho capitalist, just quickly quickly so quickly changed overnight and just started bending the knee to these Well, at a minimum we have some great global sound entities. He said some, well, like, yeah. some of the stuff he says is just hilarious and the way that he says it is is incredible. Has he has he eliminated a lot of the like has he eliminated any departments? Of course, I mean, like, he he actually did. So this is why I like I had to remove him from my an anarcho capitalist or, or anarchist designation. He's probably really a libertarian. Um, he has slashed a whole bunch of the government. Um, I still tend to think that he's maybe genuine but naive. Uh, I could be wrong about that. Who really knows what's in a man's heart? Um, but he did slash a shitload of the government. I mean, he cut like thirty percent of the government employees within thirty. I think it was like within 30 days, maybe it's 50% within 30 days, something massive. And he's continued to slash. Um, apparently, though, the blue dollar, so which is kind of like the underground dollar that you get in the in the Cuevas, um, the blue dollar has has significantly diverged from whatever the, the banks say that the, the Argentina peso is worth. 
-hmm. So, um, yeah, that it, like they're saying that the inflation's going down. I have some friends there that say that they see that. At the same time, you know, it's it, I guess it's hard to say. Well, this is one of the things that helped helped me kind of move away from doing Monerotopia there. Obviously, the bigger issue was how far away it was. <laughs> like there was just no way to run down there and kind of do things in advance. And it wasn't very centrally located for the rest of the world. Great, great for people in Argentina. But then it was also the Malay factor, right? I was watching that. I was like, like, does this guy even want Monero to be blossoming in his backyard? I mean, obviously, we've never heard him mention mention the word Monero. Uh, and now you're saying there's new cri crypto regulations coming down. Unfortunate, unfortunate to see people. People were very excited. I know people still are e excited. I would love to get uh, Alessandro's take on this. Maybe he can jump on today. Maybe I could contact the the kid who's running uh, Copa Monero. I'd love to get his take as a native. Uh, Andres, uh, maybe he wants to jump on today. Give us give us his take. It would be nice to get an update on what on what the locals think. But yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess I guess we all knew, right? Like too good to be true. Yeah, I guess um, you know. I guess that's why it's a good thing not to marry a politician, right? Whether it's Trump or Malay or whoever you say, hey, you yeah. know, you, you have some nice words. All politicians have nice words. Perhaps yours in particular are are even more um, exotic than other ones. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm going to wait and watch and see what you do. And and he he to his credit, he did a lot of libertarian stuff. If you wanted to take the angle that he's like, uh, you know, some deep state whatever, trying to get um, trying to pump the U.S. dollar, pump the the United States power. You would say something like, well, they, they know that that liberty can reverse bad situations in repressive uh, areas and governments and whatnot. And so they're opening up just enough liberty to sort of like get the good change, the, the monetary change that needs to happen to, to cap the hyperinflation, well, borderline hyperinflation, um, and then get the U.S. dollar into Argentina. Right. So that uh, so that you sort of extend the U.S. power, the U.S. dollar power. I think there's a lot of good reasons for why the U.S. would want to do something like that. The the recent, I don't know if you guys know this, but um, Saudi Arabia recently announced that they were not going to be selling their oil for only U.S. dollars anymore. Mm -hmm. That used to be anathema. That used to mean like <laughs> the the toppling of the dictatorship in your country, in your Middle Eastern country. Um, mm -hmm. But nowadays, it's kind of like the you know there's there's a little bit of sea change happening out there. So the U.S. Like the U.S. probably is looking for ways to extend the reach of the U.S. dollar, so perhaps Argentina is one of them. Um, in my mind, Tether, believe it or not, Tether is a, a big piece of that as well. Mm -hmm. Are you? Are do you consider yourself like an agorist uh, these days? At this point, like if you if you were here in the U.S., would you be participating in the election, or would you not be voting? Um, well, the thirty third degree anarchist is like fluid water you would do whatever i would probably vote for biden just to accelerate the, the retardation <laughs> that's an I've elastic heard, heard, take for sure no i know no, that's a, yeah, a 3d chess move yeah no i know yeah it's it is true though i mean look like with malay right like the, that that's what i said from day one that you know he if anything he's he's destroying the natural black market that was there right he's like the you could you could roll in to argentina with crypto, go to one of these cuevas and exchange it essentially anonymously into into cash, into pesos, and then go freaking buy property down there. Uh, I think, unfortunately, with Malay, ironically, that goes away, right? Like it would yeah, have been, it would have well, been better to keep, to keep the, you know, but you know, it's it's hard to root for that when it's destroying the country and ruining you know ruining people's lives, but. It also then with that comes the destruction, I think, of of the black market, the free market. I think from what I've heard people say in Argentina, they're so distrustful of the government that at this point, it's really hard to actually get people to um, uh, repatriate, if you will, to repatriate their funds into the banking system. Um, I have to imagine if you have a lucrative business operating some cueva and you're like, OK, cool. Now I'm not underground, and, but I'm still going to operate and do whatever the hell I want. I think there's, you know, that there's that's why the spirit of liberty is vastly more important than whoever gets into office. Because if you just have it in your mind, if the whole population has it in their mind, like, uh, okay, government, no government, whatever, we're just going to do our thing. You're you're going to be able to maintain true liberty for much longer under the presence of of a whole bunch of different systems. Mm -hmm. 
By the way, we're trying we're trying to get like the Quavas listed on XMR Bazaar somehow. Obviously, with not location, but some way of XMR Bazaar. In addition to sh showing you places all around the world that accept Monero, if you could somehow uh, make it a place where you can find Quavas that are are down to exchange Monero for cash, I think that'd be a great resource. Yeah, that would be cool. Is I assume XMR Bazaar is um, in Spanish, or is it? Eh, maybe it doesn't need to be like. I guess yeah, obviously, right now it's just English. Uh, but thinking of yeah, trying to you know start a Spanish you know Spanish version as well. Uh, trying to think how best to do that. What do you think? Like, what would be the best way? Obviously, I want this thing to be comp as global and accessible as possible. Um, can, can isn't there some kind of way to use AI at this point where like all listings can be like auto translated <laughs> into yeah, you probably whatever language you want when you when just you're need some agent it. to to pipe in. You know, to pipe in the text of of each listing into into ChatGPT or something, and yeah. and then uh, you know, and do try, it that way. Would like to try to do something like that because obviously I want it to be as as global as possible, so we can really take advantage of the network effect. You know, so anybody that's into Monero, no matter where they are in the world, can can be a part of the uh, global Monero economy. I think most web browsers translate now. Like they'll automatically translate to your whatever language setting you have. Mm -hmm. Maybe not LibreWolf. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we have people in uh, in Argentina that are helping us with XMR Bazaar, so things like that. So like maybe trying to have like an admin from each country, right? The big countries as we start. So we'll have a, yeah. a separate XMR Bazaar admin from from each country, and that should help too. So then they can communicate in their native language. But buddy, yeah, I'll, I'll let I'll let you take it away, man. I know there's obviously, I guess, a lot to say with with price too. I haven't really been keeping my eye on that, um, but I know I guess people are panicking in, in Bitcoin land because you know looks like things aren't really taking off right now. <laughs> yeah, um, we got cut short last week a little bit, so there's a couple, maybe a few extra things I want to try and touch on that that we didn't get last week. Hopefully, um, it seems like total play. My ISP is is playing good today. It's playing nicely, so uh, okay. Hopefully, we can get through the whole thing and. Not I'm telling you, man, that that, that whole entropy thing. I don't get it. You know, we, we don't change a thing yet. There's we're dealing with a new issue every time. Yeah, hopefully you'll be yeah. here this time. <laughs> well, here's uh here's to hoping. <laughs> okay, so we're looking at a little bit of hope and change right here on the Monero chart, Monero US dollar. Um, remember we had that big old crash. I, I don't know what that was about. I felt like if they really wanted to screw with the price more, it, it would have come down here and stayed down here a little bit longer. So perhaps this was just Perhaps it was just someone selling a big bag of Monero for whatever reason. Perhaps it was ransomware cashing out. Um, I don't know. Maybe uh, you know. Maybe XMR Bazaar was just uh, taking some profits on their on their healthy trading platform. Could be. I'm <laughs> no, just kidding, bro. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, but we have the price sort of uh, slowly, you know, kind of marching up here after that big crash down. Um, really, we we did hit that resistance spot here that that we said, hey, this is kind of a big headliner resistance spot. One thing that I've, that I've noticed with the wave magic is that it does tend to work better on larger time frames and with more kind of like obvious in your face patterns. Um, it, but that's true. That tends to be true in, in general of, of most patterns or at least of most indicators. So, um, yeah, where is this thing going next? I don't know, guys. I'm, I, I haven't I don't have any strong opinions on where Monero is going. I rarely do. <laughs> um, I just use the thing. Right. Um, it's just incredibly useful for me in my life personally. Uh, but, you know, if we're looking at price and we're saying which coin is going up more to relative to the other coin, uh, we could look at Bitcoin versus Monero and this lower standard deviation level big that you can see this is a long, long, long term standard deviation level. Right now, that's posing some resistance for the ratio um, because of the violent nature of how this broke down from from the delisting. It wouldn't be too surprising if we could actually just get back in here and then sort of stabilize that would really that would be my guess on the ratio. So I guess I have a stronger opinion on what the ratio does um, than what the actual XMR USD price does. Uh, and then XMR versus Ethereum, same kind of story, although it's a little bit lagging again because Ethereum has some kind of positive news. It's performing slightly better than Bitcoin um, over the past couple months. Still looking to um, find our way into this lower standard deviation area. Although I am not totally convinced that Monero versus Ethereum is actually going to pump back into this level here and then find it, find some sort of support and go up. It's just that Ethereum's about to get that ETF. It's got a lot of um, like 
bullish stuff and circumstances cir circumstances surrounding it. So um, yeah, I, I I can't say that I would that I would be betting on on a on XMR over Ethereum here. But again, you never know. I'm just a dude sharing some opinions on what I think the price might do with some dubious indicators. Uh, okay, with, as far as the divergences go, finally, 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 this chart is now long-term looking like what it's supposed to look like. We shouldn't see any divergences between the exchanges and Kraken or between each other. You should be oscillating around the zero point by and large, which is pretty much what we've seen. Um, there's a, a ever so slight differences, but we're talking about oscillating up and down at the level of 0.2%. So um, yeah, that's that, that's good. That's really what we want to see. That gives us some indication, at least, that perhaps the market is a little bit more fair <laughs> than it used to be. I don't want to go. I don't want to go off into the deep end and say that it's a fair market, but um, you know, maybe it's a little bit more fair than it was before uh, when Binance had it listed. Okay, so uh, we're looking here at the XMR versus gold price. I get there's. I guess there's nothing too um, incredible bouncing out of this chart, popping out uh, at the eyeballs. Um, obviously I would love to see this thing move back to the upper standard deviation area here. You'll notice that with the delisting, we, we effectively saw the bands widen, which is what you see with quote unquote Bollinger bands, which are just standard deviations. So, um, yeah, we did see the, the standard deviation bands widen here, which sort of, um, often that, that happens before a big move. And in a lot of cases, what you get is the reverse direction. So you might actually even go to the reverse side before the real move comes. Uh, is that is that happening here? You know, I don't know. Um, there's quite a few levels to try and hit before we really would say XMR is in a bull market versus gold. But okay, um, that basically is the XMR market. Um, it's really, it's unfortunate, you know, because I, I can't come at you guys with all this amazing Monero focused kind of analysis. Um, one thing I do need to add here is looking at the price differentials between the different places you can get XMR. So um, let's see, John Doe, YZ Cash Pump. All right, bro, let's just go straight to it then. Zcash, um, well, I guess you could say that it pumps. <laughs> this chart looks horrible, but you're right. It did pump. I noticed that this morning, actually. 65%. Wow, good for Zcash, but um, you know they only fell like 95%. So they're still, from the top of the 2021 market, they are still down 93%. I guess, um, you know, I, I guess that's that's just what happens when you when your implementation is so terrible that no one wants your coin, that the privacy is questionable, that you have to turnstile your coins because hopefully <laughs> uh, Edward Snowden and Peter Todd and, and the rest of those guys um, aren't compromised you know, by the government, so you have to turnstile your coins because they finally figured out how to do the, the trusted setup. Uh, sorry, they finally figured out how to do full membership proofs without a trusted setup, but in order to get there, they have to like take all of the coins that are in the shielded pool where you don't you can't see the amounts, and you have to like go through this turnstile. So they released something called Halo. It seemed cool, but that seems to have had no effect on their price. Um, but yeah, Zcash is actually is actually oscillating significantly. So you come down here, minus forty three percent, up, wow, almost a hundred percent, and then again down, almost minus fifty percent, and then down again forty percent, up sixty percent. Like this is the um, shit it's a shit coin, man. It's like a pump and dump. Seriously, like. I mean, here's the other thing: the the privacy coin space, the alt privacy coin space, the alt, of course, being alternate from Monero, is starting to get crowded, right? We've got Xano, who's a cool project. We got Fira; they're doing a lot of fundamental research. Oh, uh, well, Pirate Chain! I don't, you know, Pirate yeah. Chain isn't doing anything interesting. They're just a copy pasta, but without, yeah. you know, but at least there's like everything is private by default, so that's that's a good thing. But um, this is what their chart looks like. They they pumped recently. Um, they're down 66%, but that was after pumping, you know, almost, almost three X. So this actually like in, in terms of wave magic, you would say, Hey, this might actually be a good place to pick up some R maybe try and target this area right here. You know, so maybe like that, something like that. I don't know. So if you're, you know, if you're a gambler, especially if you're a privacy coin gambler and Hey, you know, that might not even be a bad idea. Why not gamble on privacy coins? At least your gambling is private across different chains, except for the exchanges <laughs> that you have to use to get between the coins. But, um, you know. That is neither here nor there. Okay. By, uh, by the see. by the way, I, I've said this in the past. Um, anybody that has connections with the Zcash community, get them to participate in Monerotopia. Have them come down. They blocked Monerotopia yeah. years ago. <laughs> Did they? <laughs> no, um, I mean, I'm just making a joke. That's so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Zcash people just like it's just block, block, block. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Zuko blocked me. Um, John Doe saying they're voting on removing the dev tax. Uh, yeah, I think I've heard that as well. Hmm. So, yeah, if anybody, John Doe, if you know, like, the community, if you follow the community, have them reach out, Monerotopia, protonmail.com. I think it'd be cool to have some Zcash devs or whoever down there, people that are a big part of that community, come talk about Zcash. Let's let's talk about it out in the open. I don't hold any Zcash. I'm not interested in Zcash. If they wanted to participate in the conference, obviously we'd ask them to to be a sponsor. So um, I guess in that respect, if they paid in Zcash, we we we'd be holding we'd be holding some. Um, but obviously, you know, it's it's an it's always been it's it's a project that's been on the cutting edge in terms of in terms of the tech. Highly respect them in those terms, but we don't need to go into it. I think Body pretty much covered it. There's 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 obvious reasons why it's you know not considered an interesting project. Um, the tech the tech is interesting, but they just did so many other things wrong. Um, it doesn't come across as a true open source digital cash protocol, the dev tax, the founder's fee, the the group of people that collectively came together to, to start it, uh, the corporate entity that they had associated with it, um, their willingness to bend the knee and uh, change their tech so that it so that it better uh, implements with, um, you know, governments, right, their, their willingness to, to add different types of essentially uh, addresses so that it can implement, you know, so that they can be allowed to be on KYC exchanges, just all, all these things. And basically, overall, the culture there of not being about just creating uh, private by default fungible money. So other than that, it is an, from a technical standpoint, it is interesting. So we'd love to have them down and just talk about it out in the open. Sorry, buddy. Take it away. Yeah, they've, they've, done, they've done quite a lot of good research that has been used by other chains. So, um, you know, in, in that regard, sure. maybe the dev tax was worth it, right? Maybe we got a lot of really interesting um, research right. that, that came out of there. And um, perhaps this, this, you know, perhaps that was their plan all along. Um, maybe they're you know, behind other projects and we don't even know. Um, that, that would actually be quite like, that would be a cool redemption arc. Actually, if the entire mm -hmm. time the plan was just to release a shit coin that they were going to milk for as much as possible to do as much dev as possible and then drop into other like chains. Um, now hopefully mm -hmm. Zuku's not listening. Cause <laughs> you know, if I, I don't want them to just come out and like take that narrative and be like, yeah, uh, sure. Why not? Yeah, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to, maybe I shouldn't have said that I'm giving them opportunity here. All right, whatever. Anyways. Um, yeah. So uh, the only one that's really performing actually pretty good right now has, uh, has been Xano, right? They had a big pump. Yeah. It came back, um, dropped a little bit. I guess that's 56%. Wow. Okay. That's quite a lot. Um, but lately, you know, what have you done for me lately? At least it's, it seems to be trying to make a bit uh, upside here. So I don't know anyone from Zcash. Uh, what was that there? John Doe? No, this is that. Cause I was saying John Doe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was telling him uh, to reach out to Zcash people. Well, if anybody else oh. is, you know, into Zcash follows it, uh, help us reach out to them. Uh, yeah. Whoever out there is not like currently blocked. <laughs> exactly. Reach out to them. <laughs> Please talk to us, bro. <laughs> we just want to talk. Okay. Um, okay, so there was something. So some of the things that we missed last week, we were getting into Bitcoin. I don't remember exactly where where uh, I dropped off, um, but we've got the Gox coin. Finally, the Gox thing is happening, and they they actually asked for a little bit more time. So they, they released a letter that's like, we're going to start repaying the Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash in July, and then they released another letter like a week later. They're like, uh, well, kid, we just we need a little bit more time. Like, okay, checks in the mail. No, wait, just kidding. So, um, yeah, the Bitcoin had a big drop off, but it was already kind of dropping off before that uh, event. And, you know, when we talk about Bitcoin, we, we really are kind of talking about a proxy for the rest of the market. Um, so, yeah, we had this big drop off um, kind of broke down. You wouldn't say we broke down, actually, because this line down here isn't drawn in such a way that would represent breakdown. This line is more like the average uptrend of the bull market, you know, the mini bull market, the the foregone conclusion of a bull market uh, since since the beginning of 2023. Anyway, so yeah, I mean, it broke down, quote unquote, but it's really still kind of trending up uh, along this lower line right here. Now, this is important for the entire crypto market, what happens with the Gox coin, because the liquidity of all coins are basically bonded together. Monero occupies a slight exception to that simply because of what it is and how it's been treated and the fractional reserve and all the price attacks, et cetera. And the, like the forcing of our price to find an organic 
support, like actual usage, real community support. Whereas the rest of these coins in my mind, almost all of them have some component of leverage built into them. They have a component of fraud built into them, into the exchanges, into that entire like network of just nastiness out there in the crypto ecosystem, um, including Bitcoin. Um, there are a lot of, let's just call it Bitmain and some of the other people with them. These people and, and their partnered exchanges, these people that mined a lot of the early coins, you know, they want the highest price of Bitcoin. They want to dump as best as they can. Um, there are economic limits to how much price can be leveraged up, but I am convinced, sir, I am certain that the price of Bitcoin is well above any organic support that it should actually have. Um, but that's not to say it wouldn't still have a high price, right? I'm not saying that it would be like $100 or $0. Okay, anyways, the point is that Cryptocurrency prices are levered up. And so when real fiat exits this entire exchange ecosystem, when that happens, that means there's less margin for the leverage. Now I'm speaking in kind of like, this isn't, I'm speaking in sort of slight analogies here because the the primary leverage mechanism is Tether um, and the printing of Tether and, and the way that they went about that. They're fractionally reserved. They say that they're fully reserved. They're not. Um, and it's been proven multiple times that they're not from multiple different ways but um okay whatever they pump my bags right with uh, in the 2021 bull market um sure thanks guys salute whatever um but the point is that when real fiat leaves the exchange ecosystem that has an effect on all prices because all of these prices are margin they're all levered up um to some extent now maybe it's not as extensive as it was in 2021 but it's still present so um, it just means that as these Gox coin get paid out, the Bitcoin and the Bitcoin cash, as that fiat leaves the system, that's going to have a negative effect on all prices. Now, you're going to have a little bit of relative difference there because some some of those people are going to sell for altcoins, not all of them. Some are some are just going to hodl, but some are going to get sold for altcoins. So that would have like that should have a little bit of differential pressure in terms of um, how that how that coin is going to um, uh, how those prices are going to play out. So. Um, yeah, in my mind, it, I think that, uh, that again, Ethereum could be a big beneficiary of this whole thing. Um, that, that remains to be seen. Actually, let's go ahead and take a look at, oh, actually, let's not take a look at Ethereum just yet. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the Bitcoin monthly. So this was something that we actually, we didn't get to that I, I wanted to get to. So the problem that we're having right now, so here's the last all-time high. Let's just drop a horizontal line there. The problem that we're having right now is that price is not just breaking through with strength, right? We, we got up there, we made a marginally higher high, um, which <laughs> was kind of like what happened here, right? A marginally higher high. Um, and then price has not followed through with strength, right? The pullback, tried to get up there, couldn't close above, fell down, and, and now like it's it's even further down. So the, the, the reason that I say that is that every other all-time high, Bitcoin broke with strength, right? Came up here, closed at the all-time high, and then busted through. Um, with strength. Same thing happened back here uh, in the 2014 market. Uh, took the horizontal line. Okay. So that was the 2014 top right there on the monthly candles. Came up, or you had a little bit of a pullback, but then broke through with strength, right? That that's 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 a strong pattern, right? You touch the top, you pull back, people taking some profits, whatever, and then and then you bust on through. And that's happened every single time with Bitcoin bull markets. But this time is different, guys. Like this time is that's not what has happened. We are now going on month number four since actually closing above the previous all time high and Bitcoin just can't can't get it up. Right. It just can't it can't get there. So that's not to say that, you know, it's over pack in, you know, sell your bags, rebuy the farm. Uh, but it is to say that that that's not strength. That's not a good kind of pattern that we want to see. Maybe this means some kind of like further washout is needed especially with the Gox coin looming out there, Germany selling their coin. Apparently Germany also rebought the coin that they sold. That was kind of weird. Um, but I mean, you've also got the United States government has like over 200,000 Bitcoin in their hands that, it, you know, they're going to sell, I guess at some point, I don't know. Um, so yeah, there's, there are, I wouldn't call them black swans, but there's just like, there's a few things out there that don't look super great for Bitcoin at the moment. Um, let's take a look at the Ethereum Bitcoin ratio. This is the two hour chart. I don't know why I put it on the two hour chart. Uh, okay. So long-term again, we're looking at this very long-term pattern. It's a falling wedge. Maybe we just go to the weekly. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. This weekly pattern, long-term falling wedge so far, like things are, this is looking like more strength than we've seen before, right? The best we've had for this line is touch, touch, touch touch and and this is i kind of consider this a wick so just like a small point for for you guys out there that might be trading when you have a week that comes up and then immediately comes back down this in my mind is effectively a wick that's that's almost the same thing as a wick it just so happened that price closed uh, you know right or, that wick happened on a sunday basically is, is what that means 
So um, what we're seeing here is, is strength. It's not as fast as I really wanted it to be, as I thought it was going to be. But effectively, you'll notice that price is hanging out. It's hugging the top side of that, that descending line right there. So uh, I still do expect this to eventually break out. I guess it's going to be delayed. In some ways, I feel like maybe this is an easy way for market makers to sort of take advantage of, of what looks like it was a break. So like right here, it definitely looked like this was breaking. This was a, a, a larger break than we had seen at any time in the past, I think, two or three years, however far back that goes. I think three years now. So yeah, that was a bigger break than, than we've seen, um, but then it fell back down below. So um, yeah, I mean, it, you've got people out there that are trading on leverage. So it's very possible that like, that some of this action, some of this oscillation is really just kind of wrecking people or trying to wreck people on leverage, trying to build up that liquidity. At any rate, yeah, I mean, again, guys, I just, it, it's going to be Ethereum, like Ethereum. And, and that's not to say there's not better chains out there as far as like um, contracts platform, right? I'm not trying to make the case for why Ethereum is the best contracts platform, um, but it's got the network effects and network effects do count for something. Um, uh, much, <laughs> maybe much to the chagrin of a lot of altcoiners uh, uh, and even somewhat um, to our own chagrin. So, uh, but yeah, Ethereum at some point is gonna gonna break out here and, and then move to the top side. Um, and you can also kind of see this in the Bitcoin dominance chart. Same kind of deal here. Uh, Bitcoin dominance is um, so it's it's trying to break down this lower line. You'll notice like okay, it broke down a little bit right here at that area, and then we're kind of doing the same thing here. But you'll notice it tend it's hugging closer and closer to this bottom line. So and again, in my mind, like this thing is gonna break down, and when that does, um, you know that's probably to the benefit of Ethereum, hopefully also Monero and, uh, you know, whatever other shit coins, um, you guys might be holding. Oh, you know, also, uh, worth looking at the BCH price because, uh, the Gox coin does deal in BCH. So, um, yeah, BCH had a pretty nice run up here for this bull market. That's actually a seven X. That's, that's pretty fucking huge. That's, um, I guess good for those guys, right? You got a big, big price pumps here. Um, I would be concerned about whether this can continue. Um, I don't think that it probably can. I think that BCH is going to be the recipient, uh, or it's going it's it's going to get hit the worst by these Gox coin when they get released. It's most likely that that more people are going to dump their Gox BCH and dump that into anything else other than BCH. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Perhaps there's some like larger rotation happening in the background, like for market makers. Um, I don't really know. Um, guys, smash that like button. Uh, <laughs> just uh, just a reminder out there. Thanks, Roy. Um, okay, so yeah, BCH is probably going to get hit hard. We're we're seeing it here is 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 writing up now on this. Um, uh, oops, why it isn't going to work? Okay, here we go. We're we're seeing that it's. Hmm, all right, for whatever reason, the brush does not want to work. Whatever. BCH price is now riding this lower upper standard deviation band. Um, this is the kind of thing you might see oscillate for a minute and then drop down uh, and then try and probably touch this this uh, this lower area, area here, the lower standard deviation. Once those Gox coin wash out, that's probably actually a good opportunity to pick up some BCH. Um, but uh, we have a lot to talk about, so let's, let's drop that and go to the macro here. We had some macro numbers come out, and what's happening here, guys, tail risk is rising. Now, that doesn't mean that, that um, things are about to crash. In fact... As tail risk rises, one of the very like counter things, counterintuitive things is that the stock market and markets in general can continue to pump. Um, okay, well, actually, let, let me let me pause here and let's say uh, me gold six sixty six. Um, he says that being money, quote unquote, is the biggest market of them all. Bitcoin ditching it to become a digital real estate, quote unquote, has closed itself in in a little speculation bubble. Hundred percent spot on. Um, the market for money, the, the market cap of money is vastly larger than the market cap for um, speculative monetary instruments. You can consider gold to be a speculative monetary instrument, right? It's a pure monetary instrument that doesn't do anything else other than be a, a cool, shiny rock um, that we, we still use out of nostalgia. And obviously, it's got some cool properties that, that actually do make it monetarily useful. Um, but the market cap of gold is what, like $20 trillion maybe? Um, but the market cap of money, what people actually use as, as money is somewhere closer to 100, 200 trillion, um, like total global. You know, we're talking about all fiat, all cash, all coins, um, all digital representations of cash and coins, you know, like checking and money market. And then we're also talking about bonds and all that kind of stuff as well. All of that is such a vastly larger market cap than, than this digital real estate um, that, yeah, you really limit your potential um, when that's your if that's your narrative, that you're going to be digital gold and you don't care about transaction fees. 
okay, to their credit, they say that eventually one day trademark, they'll have some like plans for scaling. And they also say that lightning is amazing and it functions so perfect, but it doesn't. And we all know that it doesn't anyways, yet I digress. So back to the macro. Um, okay. So what we're seeing here is unemployment is spiking. This is like a telltale classic sign of recession on the way. Um, as your, as your unemployment starts to spike, this has happened every single time. So notice this right here, 2007, unemployment starts rising into 2008 down here, 2000 unemployment starts rising into 2001, which were 2008 and 2001 were the major crashes. So we're seeing the same pattern again. Now, the one thing that you might try to say about this is that, okay, well, we're coming from a low inflation at 3.4%, which is very, very low. And only now are we at, are we at 4%. So, um, perhaps this chart has a little bit extra room to breathe before it really becomes a problem. Nevertheless, um, we are seeing that same pattern where, um, where, where you get this rising unemployment and that that's happening now. Um, the other thing that's happening at the moment is that, so we got some new interest rate numbers, new CPI numbers. CPI is now at 3% <laughs> officially. That's probably like a Soviet Union 3% than an actual true 3%. Nevertheless, um, the way that they measure it has come down a little bit, uh, as has the core inflation. So these are like, that's kind of a good sign. Um, however, that does mean that people are now speculating that the Federal Reserve can and will lower rates. And right now the housing market, so this is the bond chart, actually, just to be slightly schizophrenic, let's go back. Okay, housing market in yellow here. Um, the housing market has actually um, had a hard time actually putting on new gains. Usually it, it forms this sort of seasonal sawtooth pattern on the way up, and it's just done this for years and years and years. Um, but we've seen ever since uh, the top in 2022, uh, the top of the housing market in 2022, ever since then, we've spent two years now where we're having a hard time. The housing market is having a hard time putting on new highs. And that makes sense because rates are so high. People don't want to take out new loans. And if you can't, can't take out new loans, then you have low volume and it's hard to, it's hard for people to pay more for a house when you're already paying so much interest. So um, yeah, that's a problem for the housing market and no doubt they would like to lower interest rates, but they're really got their back up against the wall with the inflation. Um, however, what we can see here now is ever since those CPI numbers, the speculation is already coming in on the lowering of rates. My guess is the top is in, guys. That for as far as um, as far as the overall interest rates uh, for U.S. bonds, um, the top is in. We're we're already seeing the top. That happened. Your last chance to get into a U.S. bond. Since I know all of you really want to get into U.S. bonds, you're just itching to to smash that buy button on a nice, lovely, hefty five percent uh, U.S. bond. Anyways. Um, yeah, yeah, this thing is already is already on its way down. That's the speculation that the Fed is going to lower rates. They probably are going to lower rates sometime later this year. And this leads us, so we talked about rising tail risk. So again, this is like, that's the headliner here. We are entering a period of rising tail risk now. The moment that the Fed starts lowering rates will be uh, a sign to us that it's time to start um, getting worried. Conversely, we will probably continue to see new stock market gains and new crypto gains. Could take some time for this whole crypto, you know, Gox thing to wash out a little bit, whatever. But ultimately, depending on when the tail risk strikes, um, we should probably see some new highs with crypto um, and then followed by a major pullback. So, um, yeah, we've talked about this bond market chart so many time, times before. The pattern is that things will continue rising even as these bond rates start lowering. Right. So like the S&P will still continue rising. And then at some point, you'll see some massive um, volatility in the bond market where rates drop off and then the yield curve inversion corrects to the upside. That's just what we've seen for the past 20 years. That's what we're looking at to know when to sell the market. Um, it becomes a game of chicken in a lot of ways because you can bet that if my dumbass has seen this, then there's a whole bunch of other slightly less dumbasses that have seen this that have big money. Um, and that means that it's going to get front run. So um, we don't. We probably won't wait for this massive, um, this massive uh, crash in bonds or, or, or this massive volatility in bonds before actually taking protective measures for our stack. Um, I'll try and keep you guys appraised of that in real time. Right now, don't start running around with your head cut off. Don't, 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 uh, don't panic. Um, there's probably more gains on the way here, but um, especially if you if you hold the stock market because this shit just keeps going up and up and up, right? Um, uh, continues to go up. Some people are like, it's just NVIDIA, man. It's only NVIDIA. Like, no, it's not actually. NVIDIA has been flat. Um, this white line here signifies the moment that I said NVIDIA is not a bubble. Um, <laughs> and maybe I'll turn out to be right or maybe I'll turn out to be wrong. But effectively, NVIDIA is, is still like moving to the upside, but it does not com 
pose the majority of what's happening with the S and P and and the Nasdaq. Although you know it's it's got a big market cap too. Uh, but yeah, I mean things just continue to go up here with the S and P five hundred and the Nasdaq. Nasdaq being tech stocks. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean I guess good for the stock rows, right? Good for the boomers especially, um, and and a few of those greatest generation that are still uh, hanging on out there. Um, but yeah, they're they're making money. Good for them. I don't want I don't want to see them lose all their retirement. Uh, I mean, because that means you got to take care of them, right? Like you're going to have to spend all of your precious crypto to take care of them. If the stock market crashes, goes to zero forever, um, that won't be that won't be a good time for anybody. Actually, you won't be able to order your Amazon stuff or um, but, you know, maybe maybe you could order your uh, XMR Bazaar stuff. Right? Maybe we could replace Amazon. Hopefully one day, um, one day soon. Uh, OK, anyways, just kidding. Uh, kidding, not kidding. Um, half serious. Uh, let's take a look at gold. So we're looking at gold here. Um, yeah, yeah, there was, so one thing that I did want to cover last week is that, um, gold was doing really good at hanging on. Like, um, I, you know, I said, Hey, maybe there's kind of like this head and shoulders thing going on, but then it, it held on. And I said, well, you know, it's actually looking like it has some strength. Maybe this thing can, can keep going. So, um, unfortunately we, we didn't get to the, we didn't get to that last week, but gold continues to perform here. Hypothetically, like if you really wanted to be a hanger on of patterns, you could say that this is still could be a head and shoulders, right? Um, but you know, that's, eh, you know, that, that's reading a bit too much into the tea leaves than is, is really necessary. Um, but especially with everything else going up, you, you'd have to think, Hey, you know, gold, gold should perform. Um, that was kind of also sparked by the dollar index dropping. So the dollar index dropping is, is, um, uh, probably heavily related to the CPI numbers, which came down, right? So the, the inflation came down, it was the reported inflation came down. And that means everyone says, oh, well, good. Inflation's coming down. That means that uh, the bonds, that the Fed is going to lower rates. And if Fed's going to lower rates, that means that we can do more of uh, the dollar printing via the banking system, which is the primary way that dollars get printed, believe it or not, um, as opposed to people thinking it was all printed by the Fed. No, they just set up the system by which dollars can be printed um, and leveraged into existence by, um, well, we won't name any names, but by all of the typical players that love to, to take loans with the banking system, which creates new money. Uh, which is easier to do when rates are lower. So in the anticipation of that, the speculators have said that the Dixie um, should go down. So they've been selling dollar index, um, and this has actually dropped to the downside now. So um, yeah, I guess uh, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to say here I was wrong. Um, we didn't actually make it to this level. Um, the, the fat lady has sung on uh, any trades that anyone might have wanted to take, <laughs> getting uh, getting to that, that level up there. So yeah, you know, can't nail them all, guys. Uh, but it's just the dollar index. Who gives a, who gives a crap about that? Uh, last thing we'll talk about is the reverse repos. Remember, this is money parked with the Fed overnight. They get the federal funds rate for doing so. Um, we had that big spike. I said, hey, this raises an eyebrow in terms of like tail risk, but then it came right back down. Okay. Um, nevertheless, tail risk is still rising in this market. That doesn't mean things are going to go down post haste. Probably things will just continue to rip for a period of time, which is kind of what happened before the uh, the events of 2020. Um, they, things pumped to the upside pretty big, uh, in 2019 and then things came down 33%. It's a good way of managing. Like if you're, you know, if you're the, if you're the devil and your goal is to, um, is to try and manage things to the greatest extent possible. Let's go back here to, sorry. Wow. It's been a while. Jeez. It's been quite a while. All right. Let's just go to the weekly. All right. Last thing. Sorry. Last thing. And then we'll, and then we'll, we'll call it a day. Uh, okay. So here we go. We've got the 2019 market. We got the 2019 market and then the events of 2020. Dang it. No, I just can't seem to get it together on this chart. <sighs> Finally. Okay, here we go. We had this big pump on the on the S&P and NASDAQ. Uh, and then whatever that weird thing was that happened in March of 2020 caused the whole market to crash. But you'll notice that that was, you know, a big pump happened here to the tune of 32%. So that when things crashed down to the tune of 30%, it's like, ah, whatever, no big deal. You know, we're just where we were last year. Um, so that's a good way to manage, um, like, the appearance of things. Uh, so I would expect something similar, something congruent for the next tail risk event. Again, it's not here, but it's 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 just finally starting to to get a little bit to, to grow. Um, okay, so I guess that's all I got for you guys. Um, that that's hopefully should be comprehensive enough price report for today. Let me see if there's anything on my list here that I forgot. Um, no, I think we, oh, uh, maybe a couple things. The SEC dropped its investigation into Paxos BUSD. So, um, the coin, oh, uh, so the, the, the SEC apparently was like threatening Paxos and with their Binance USD and some other stuff. And then, um, you guys are security, but then they dropped that court case probably cause they're losing and a lot of stuff. Um, another thing that's interesting is that Coinbase 
put a subpoena for Gary Gensler. They want to subpoena that guy and depose him. Um, depose him? Deposition him? Mm, I, I'm sure I'm getting that terminology wrong. Anyways, it's where you sit down and you say, hey, yo, you got to answer these questions. You're under oath. Um, we're going to record everything. And then later we can use that in court if we need to. So um, we'll see if the court grants. Um, that would be very, very interesting in my in my mind to see what Gensler has to say uh, on in a deposition in, in a Coinbase lawsuit against them. Um, you know, again, that's to me a lot of this. That's still like it still feels a little bit like theater. OK, cool. Maybe it's the theater that we need to pump our bags if you're, you know, if you like to buy shit coins, altcoins, any other coins other than Monero. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's that's the price report, guys. Ca caught up here after a couple of weeks. Uh, after getting cut short last week. So hope that hope you guys find that useful.